No live scope either. So I'm doing a technique right here. We've got a deep hole against this bluff and I'm just casting it out and reeling it back in. Mimicking a small shad. I've already caught one doing it. Didn't realize my GoPro was off. And you normally feel them thump it pretty good when you're doing this because you have a tight line straight to the jig and you're moving it and they stop it. This hole is probably 10 feet deep. This is a big fish, whatever it is. Big crappie. Barely hooked. <laughs> Look at that. He was down on the bottom of that hole. Hopefully that's a pattern. Hopefully his buddies are down there. Okay, so there's some fish out in this deep hole here. We're just reeling it slow along the bottom. Seems like a little better average down there. These, there's a bunch of borderline keepers. All these fish have been caught before. So they're all the throwbacks. That one had like three holes in its mouth. Yeah, there's some small ones down there too. Good grief, you think he wanted that? They're all just a little bit under. Would have caught half a limit by now. Can't find the big ones. That's what the guys at the ramp were saying. We're on a pattern, that's good though. Say, I thought that one felt a little better. <laughs> yeah, they're down there. You just gotta weed through all the small ones. Nice slab. I'm liking that underspin. I would way rather do this than drop vertical drop into brush. Just casting for them and feeling the thump is a lot more fun. Just letting it hit bottom and reeling it in slow. Letting that little blade do the work. I haven't felt any brush down there. I think they're just sitting in this deep water. I don't know if they're holding on any cover. And again, these fish are in here. I don't know if you can see shad popping in the background, but these fish are in here after shad. So this little white underspin with that blade on it is a perfect imitation and I've got it tied with some bucktail on the back and some some of that chenille I've been talking about that makes that slow descent and it just kind of hangs there in the strike zone and it's pretty effective little baby There's another nine and three quarters. Sorry for the noise in the background. I passed a group of young guys and uh, I guess they got bored of fishing and now they're like having a rock fight in the woods or something. 
Oh, that one ate it on the fall. Feels good. Feels really good. Oh, he's a keeper. What are they doing over there? Throwing glass bottles at each other and stuff. I'd rather just catch fish. Good grief. There might be some uh, substances involved that would impair judgment. That should be a keeper. When you hear the bite, thunk, in your rod, it's probably a decent one. This one is not decent. He was just really excited to eat that underspin. But fun bite, nonetheless. Oh, popped it at the wrong time. <laughs> you ever had one bite it on the pop? Feels super weird. Well, he might keep. He's really skinny. Hey, stop, stop. Or as Richard Jean would say, quit, quit. Highly recommend Richard Jean, the fishing machine. He's funny, but it, behind all the funny is a genius. You can learn a lot from that man. He is, in fact, a fishing machine. If y'all wonder why I keep so many crappie, first of all, we eat them me and my family and then I share them with my friends the group that I have Christian fellowship with a lot of them appreciate some fresh fish so I do believe in conservation but when I do uh, catch a limit they don't go to waste we either eat them ourselves kind of host a fish fry or share them with friends and family so these crappie don't go to waste and they are delicious let me know in the comments if you want me to share my recipe because it is kind of quickly becoming appreciated at least. I was going to say legendary, but I don't know if I would go that far. There's always one more dink. I'm using straight 10 pound braid and I will try and uh, when I get back to the studio I'll try and give you all the whole shakedown of what I'm using and there will be links for everything I can find at least on Amazon those are affiliate links and that helps me out because I'm just a little guy on YouTube and I don't make money off of YouTube yet so that helps out the channel and allows us to get materials and to fish on Mondays like we are today. So check out those links and uh, help the channel out. Pick yourself up some gear and catch yourself some crappie. Okay, we're back in the studio here, and I'm gonna be running some down some tackle for y'all. So what y'all saw me using in that video was actually this rod, my eight foot ACC. And I was using that because I had fished some brush, like my last video dipping in brush. And then I came to that deep hole and I was fishing that casting pattern. And I only had this one reel out there with me, so I didn't feel like switching it all over. But this is the rod I should have been using in that bonus clip at the end. This was the rod. Perfect for casting and perfect for this, this technique. This is a Ducket Crappie Slayer, seven foot light. And man, this thing, super soft tip really nice metal guides these things are awesome love these rods i'm not sure i can get this link on amazon but i'll link the actual website 
so you can grab these. This is the best crappie rod I've ever found. There are some more specific applications for the ACC crappie sticks for that long one like dipping in my last video, but as far as casting for crappie, this ducket is the way to go. I actually bought this reel from some money I wanted at a tournament, but this is a Shimano Stratic. A little bit too much reel for crappie fishing, but it makes it really nice. If you can afford to get a, a Shimano Stratic, definitely recommend that. They're buttery smooth, and I've had this one for years, and uh, it just keeps coming back for more. So Shimano Stratic on there, 10 pound fire line, thermally fused. I, th I think they get heat, and they, it's like braid, but they get heat, and they melt it all down into a, more of a streamlined type of line. And once you break this stuff in, this stuff is amazing. Highly recommend this fire line. You can get it in black or white. White is, is cool because you can see it. And then, so that's the rod and reels. As you saw, I was using several different, this is my hand tied jig box, it's a mess. But I, I tie all these by hand. And the key that day was this chenille. Uh, I have several different colors of it and it's longer strands on it and what that does in the water is it causes a lot more resistance and it gives it a slower fall so you can if you can give it a little upward tension and kind of real slow man that thing will just hover there in front of their faces so I caught a couple on hair jig like this and then I switched over to same concept but since I was reeling it down there and trying to imitate a shad, I ended up going with an underspin. Now this is a uh, road runner and it has this little blade underneath and that's just a little extra flash down there to um, to give off that little shad vibe. So, oops. Again, this longer chenille on there um, for that slow fall and that slow retrieve. That's what was getting those crappie to bite. Let me know if you want me to show y'all how to tie these. Um, this one specifically, I gave it a flat bottom. I trimmed all these fibers off the bottom so this blade can have room to spin and those aren't getting in the way. But yeah, those are the two baits I was using. Guys, this is really simple. I learned this technique during the spawn up in Oklahoma. A lot of times we'll fish a, a jig underneath a bobber in shallow water around rock to catch spawning crappie. But I found if I wanted to go a little deeper, uh, I could take the bobber off and just cast it out and reel it super slow along the bottom, keeping that rod tip up and giving it an occasional pop. And it's been really effective. So this can work in areas where the crappie are not all up in the brush and this specific video they were just out in that deep hole probably waiting for shad to come by so it was a perfect place to implement this casting method during the spawn from the bank there's a lot of times when this method can work it's a great search method so next time you're out on the water give this technique a try this spring and you're sure to catch some crappie so if you have any questions let me know in the comments and other than that, I thank you all for watching. We'll see you next time on Fishing Outside the Box.